Hello there, I'm Vienno and this is my 15th video tutorial on D3 where we'll be looking at how to create a tree layout in D3. Now I've tried recording this a couple of times and uh, all the previous attempts have been too long so I think I'm, I'm afraid I'll have to speed this up a bit more than I, I'd like to but uh, yeah, let's just uh, dive, right, dive right into it. So to create a tree layout First of all, we need to actually um, create the, the layout itself. And just as with the, the pie layout, uh, this layout is created by writing d3.layout, oops, layout, and then the name of the layout, uh, which is tree in this case. And uh, all the layouts are both functions and objects at the same time so there are a number of different methods that we can use to customize them and uh, set the properties and one of the the, um, the methods that uh, the tree layout comes with is size so we'll just set the size right now and you do that within parentheses and square brackets so let's set it to 400 and 400 um, yeah, and I prepared this canvas with a width and height of 500 and everything in it is stored in this uh, in a G element. Right, so we have our tree layout created. What we need to do next is to load our data, which is stored in this uh, mydata.json file. And I showed you how to do this uh, previously, so I won't go into the details, but uh, we'll use a callback function here to set the name of our data. I'll just call it data. And um, so we have our tree layout. Now we can make use of the methods that comes with it. And the first thing we need to do, or that we can do, is um, use the nodes method. What the node nodes method does is it runs the tree layout and returns all the objects in in our uh, data right here so each of these uh, objects and uh, yeah it returns an, an array of all those nodes and uh, each of those nodes will I can show you real quick if we console log nodes save refresh and inspect console we have this array of all the objects and each object has a number of different properties. It has the children, all the children belonging to that node, uh, all the parents, well, the parent, and also a depth property and uh, an X and Y property. And these are especially important because these store um, the coordinates that we'll use to uh, place the, the nodes onto our document. So the next step uh, would be to create the links, that is the path between each node that we took a look at in the previous video. Um, and we'll reference our tree layout again, and this time use the links method. And the links method expects uh, input in the format of, um, well, nodes. So we'll just supply it with the nodes um, variable that we have stored here and if we console log the links you can see that it also returns an array of objects but this time each object is uh, has two properties the source and the target uh, property and the source is uh, the source node with these coordinates so the coordinates of each uh, node and the target also contains uh, well the target node with um, its coordinates uh, so we'll use that later to to connect our different nodes together let's remove this console log uh, so Let's begin by adding a circle to each node. Well, first of all, we need to create a group element that holds uh, the nodes together. So 
we'll do some basic uh, data binding. We'll say var node and uh, canvas select all and we'll select everything that has the class of node which is nothing and bind that to our data stored in um, well the, the data array here and uh, enter as usual and we'll append a g element to each of those objects and we'll give it a class of uh, node okay so now we're ready to append things to our nodes to our uh, g elements here so we'll just do node append and let's start with the circles and uh, let's give them a radius so all circles will have a radius of five and also let's give them a nice color let's say steel blue and save and refresh and uh, we haven't actually provided we haven't specified where the nodes should be placed they have their x and y properties but those are just properties belonging to the object we need to actually tell d3 to place them on the screen according to those properties if that makes sense and uh, the way we do that is simply using a transform so we'll say transform and this will be a function this time and we'll return a translate and uh, this is a bit messy but the way we do this is um, so let's see translate and then we'll append um, the x and y properties so we'll say translate with the x and the comma there and append the y property and let's see was that was that right I think so let's save and refresh you can see that they are all placed out according to their x and y properties that each object has okay so the next thing we can do is append some text the the labels to each object or each node so we'll just say node append text and the text will be a function of our data of course and uh, we'll return the name of each object so if we refresh we have our labels right there okay so let's add the actual paths that connects all uh, um, all the uh, all the nodes we have to do some data binding again and as I showed you uh, before all the paths are well the the links between the nodes are stored in this links uh, variable containing an array of objects with a source and target attribute so we'll say canvas dot select all and we'll say select everything with a class of link and the data this time comes from well the links uh, variable and enter and append a path just as we've uh, done before and let's give it give each path the class of link and some basic stylistic properties a fill of none let me scroll down here and uh, a stroke of let's say let's give it a light gray color and we also need to supply it with the uh, the path data so we'll create a diagonal path generator we can just do it right here so we'll say diagonal is equal to d3 dot uh, let's see svg dot diagonal and let's save this and refresh nope let's see if we have some errors here okay at line 50 okay so I spelled that wrong let's try again okay so we have these nines nicer curved curvy lines between well connecting each node let's um, 
so it's it it's default um, layout or position or whatever you want to call it is it's the tree layout starts from the, the top and goes to the bottom but let's say we wanted it to go from the left to the right um, so we need to rotate both the nodes and the paths uh, so let's start with the nodes and it's actually really simple to do this you just have to switch um, well flip the X and Y coordinates so if we move them around like that and save and refresh you can see that they are shifted uh, and for the path we need to use an accessor function to our path generator the diagonal right here and that one is called uh, projection and this simply converts the the start and ending points of each object so the st if we right now if we don't um, so the default value would be return dx dy this is the default uh, setting of this um, of this uh, yeah of the project of the projection so if we refresh now it won't um, uh, yeah it, it will have this position but if we flip these around as we did with the nodes uh, it will actually convert the start and end ending points so that they match our rotated nodes so yeah uh, obviously you can change we would need to move these labels a bit to the right and a bit uh, down the page to make it look better but uh, those are just stylistic details uh, but that's how you create a simple tree layout in D3 so I know this went uh, a bit fast but I would encourage you to if you feel uh, uh, a bit confused as is a expected just play around with this and uh, listen to what I said in this video again and console log the notes and the links and take a look at what they what kind of in information they contain and also read the documentation and it will become clear uh, the more you experience the more you experiment with it so yeah that's it for now see you